we're going way back deep okay. cut so i always knew what i was gonna do i was gonna be an actress and a singer and i always knew that and i when i was two years old i was talking about going to hollywood and my mom said who taught her about hollywood i didn't teach her about hollywood so there's always been this weird fascination me in hollywood and i always knew what i was gonna do and i think for that reason i i was a very like um frustrated kid it's why i believe in past lives because i have felt some we we're getting really deep you you asked the question greg so we're about to go there I mean, crystal so you know it's all okay, good. okay good. i mean i feel deeply that i was born and i felt behind i have always felt behind felt like I should have achieved more. Nothing was have has ever been impressive enough for me. And I feel like I needed to fast forward to adulthood, to getting to be out on my own in Hollywood. And I think it hurt my mom a lot because childhood, even though I had a very lovely childhood, I just was in a rush and I just didn't connect to childhood. It's so sad to say, but I was always singing. I was always, when my grandma died and I was a baby girl, my mom said that all I did was sing and she knew that I was self-soothing and that I was an artist. So before I was even saying, I'm gonna be an actress and a singer, she knew that that was where I was headed. And they were hoping that I was gonna grow out of it, but I've always known. And I think there's a part of me that now that I'm finally getting to live my dream is a little at peace. It's like the little girl in me is like, it has taken so much longer than I ever thought, but at least we're finally getting to do the things that we wanted to do. So many, I mean, I, I grew up around the corner from a comic book shop. And so comics, and I have an older brother, obviously. And so comics are very formative for me because I would walk around the comic book store and not see any girls. And that, when you're a little girl, the way that you know what your section is, is because it's really pink. So I'd be looking for my girl section. <laughs> and I was like, wait, but this is for kids, but there's no girl section. I found it very confusing. And my brother would show me Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn. And that's why I made a short film about an origin story of Poison Ivy that I directed and I star in as well, because she holds a very dear place in my heart because I felt like she was a woman in a man's world, which is how I have felt a lot of my life and a lot of my career. Um, so Poison Ivy is, and Catwoman and Harley Quinn, very, very dear to me. I'm a very big M. Night Shyamalan fan. The Sixth Sense is my favorite movie of all time. I'm a very big Jordan Peele fan. I'm a, I mean, Get Out is like perfection. I'm a very big Lena Dunham fan. I think she was doing it before anyone was doing it. I mean, she's hang, letting it all hang out. She writes, she directs, she stars in her own stuff. She's fearless, um, big fan, big fan of Amy Schumer, Trainwreck, her stand-up, her documentary that I just watched is so epic, expecting Amy, her her harrowing journey through motherhood. Julie DeCorno, I've been mentioning her a lot because I just think her work, Raw is one of my favorite films, Titan. I just think she is a wild woman. I think she just keeps moving and she doesn't care if you are like on on her level. She's gonna do what she's gonna do and she doesn't wait for you to keep up. And I think that is so epic. That's why, you know, I try to keep make my scripts snappy that like there's no breaks for for the characters to laugh. It's like, this is just them living because I, I admire the filmmakers that don't hold for the audience. I believe that the audience is smart and they will catch up and they are on your level and, and to not spoon feed them, to, to trust that your audience is with you um, like my favorite filmmakers do. So, so many, a lot of horror, horror films. I grew up on horror films and, and I grew up on, on women in comedy. So those are kind of my two loves. No. No. I'm afraid all the time. <laughs> I'm constantly in a state of fear very afraid i'm terrified right now i'm every i can barely sleep at night because i'm so scared of what the world how the world is going to receive my film or not receive my film is the world even going to watch my film i'm in a constant state of fear but i'm i'm very brave i will say that i feel a lot of fear but i do it anyway i thought that i would be like writing like aaron's 
Dorkin the entire two weeks of freezing my eggs. I was like, I'm gonna write a masterpiece. And I was so sick and bloated and hormonal that I was just on the couch, to be totally honest. And I just wanted to watch. I wanted, I didn't have the the energy or creativity in me to be like dreaming. So I was just needing the, I just wanted to watch a film that reflected my experience. I didn't even need it to be about egg freezing, to be totally honest. I just wanted to see a single chick in her 30s like fighting for her goddamn life like I was. And I just didn't feel like I was finding that. And I was finding a lot of films about IVF and like couples holding each other through the process. And I was like, nobody is holding me. So I was taking notes when I could and I would kind of put down thoughts and trying to capture at least an emotion or a moment or a thought while I was going through the process. But it wasn't until a year later that a couple of my big studio films got just killed in one day in one fell swoop my what was supposed to be my directorial debut at a studio and then a big franchise that I had been working on for two and a half years and I just thought I can't keep devoting my nights and days to building dreams that are just going to be wiped away by the powers that be like I have to be the cavalry I can't keep waiting for the cavalry as Mark Duplass says and so I said I, I need a month I need everyone to just not need me for a month. I'm get buy me some time with my overlords and I'm going to write that film. Now that I've had a little bit of distance from it, I've had a few months, I'm going to I'm going to sit down and I'm going to bang it out and I'm going to direct it and I'm going to star in it and I'm not going into development and I'll make it for $5 with my friends if I have to, but it's too dear to me to enter a system that will pick it apart and change it and I won't recognize it anymore. So somehow it got made. <laughs> I don't know. It's like, it's a, one of those moments where you're, you're just, you're in such a surreal time of darkness and in grief that you kind of have nothing to lose. You know, you're like, I have nothing to lose at this point. What are you going to do? Tell me no. Everyone's telling me no. I'm going to tell me yes. And I've made a lot of movies at very little, tiny budgets. And I believe in small budgets and I believe in scrappy independent filmmaking. Sometimes I, I used to say that I felt like I was killing it, playing basketball in Latvia. And then I did South by, and then I got a call and they're like, come play for the Lakers. And I was like, I've made it, but then they're, they've got me warming the bench. So I've been sitting on the bench in the Lakers uniform and I'm going, if I don't get to play ball, then send me back to Latvia because at least in Latvia, I get to play ball. And that's how I feel about independent film in the studio system where I was like, thank you for the Lakers jersey, but I came here to make movies and we're not making a whole lot of movies here. <laughs> we're making a whole lot of Aquaman, but I, I don't make those types of movies and I have stories to tell too. So this was sort of my rebellious, Jerry Maguire answer to my films getting killed by the studio. I'm so excited. As, as soon as I'm like hating on the studios, I'm like, let me tell you how much I love my studio movie. <laughs> I have to say, I, I had a conversation with Sony before pitching my ideas because I told her this exact story that I just told you, Greg, I'm heartbroken. I don't believe in this process anymore. I don't wanna give you my blood and my sweat and my tears and my soul because that's what I do, that's how I write. I don't know any other way of writing is but to give my entire heart to it. And I love this film, I love this franchise. I love, I was such a huge Sarah Michelle Gellar fan. I mean, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is so formative for me. So like, if you're going to just pay me and maybe make it, Get another writer, you know, because I can't ha handle more deaths. I can't handle more grief. And we had that real conversation and there's a hunger for nostalgic films. Like I know we did last summer. Scream is really working. Scream is really proving it. It's not a hugely, it's not a hundred million dollar film that we have to make, you know? So it felt like it checked off a few of the boxes that I could be at least somewhat, there's a great director attached just came off of Do Revenge, Jen Kate and Robinson. So I just felt like I wanna work with Jen. I wanna write my dream requel of this film and this will be 
my my goodbye, my bow out of writing studio film after studio film. So that's that's gonna be the last one. 